I want you to consider how probative the following evidence is. A suspect tests positive for explosive substances on hands, and this test is 95% accurate when explosive substances are present. This grease test was used, for example, in the infamous case of the Birmingham Six wrongly convicted for an IRA bombing. The suspects were known to have been playing cards together on a train prior to being tested. And the test also has a 95% chance of being positive if the suspect handled playing cards. So is the evidence probative? Now most people say that the evidence is not probative. But that's because people restrict their reasoning to explosive versus playing card hypotheses. And if these are really mutually exclusive and exhaustive, then that's fine. But they're not. If we assume that handling explosives and playing cards are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, then this is the correct model. So the suspect was either handling explosives or playing cards, and we'll assume a 50-50 prior there. And how we define positive test? If the suspect was playing cards, there's a 95% chance that the test will be positive. And if the suspect handled explosives, there's a 95% chance that the test will be positive. So in this case, if we observe a positive test, we run the model, makes absolutely no difference. The posterior hasn't changed from the prior. It can't distinguish between these. In fact, it's no better than had we received the false test result because we know that one of these is true. But that model wasn't correct. A suspect could have handled explosives and could have also been playing cards and could have been doing neither. What's the positive test in this case? Well, we've got to be a bit more careful here. If the suspect had explosives and didn't play cards, we're gonna assume the same 95% accuracy as before. And similarly, if the suspect played cards and the suspect didn't handle explosives, we'll assume that. That's exactly what we were assuming with the mutually exclusive and exhaustive hypothesis. But what about if they were both true? And if neither are true? Well, if they're both true, we'd expect that probability to increase because they've got the chemical from both the explosives and the card on them. So we've put that up a little bit. And if neither of them are true, we'd expect the probability of a positive test to be very small. So in this case, if we observe a positive test, well, let's see what happens to the suspect handle explosives. Well, that probability has gone up. It's gone up the same as playing cards, but it's still gone up. So your posterior belief in them handling explosives has increased. And that's the key thing. Your hypothesis is not handling explosives against playing cards. It's handling explosives against not handling explosives. And the evidence does have probative value to support that hypothesis. This model, of course, makes much more sense because if we enter force here, we can see that the probability of both of these significantly drops. What we haven't discussed, and is critical in this case, is whether or not there's actually evidence of the suspects playing cards. So let's again suppose that we have the positive test result. We run the model. Probability of suspect handled explosives, as we saw, increases, same way as playing cards does. But if we have evidence that they did play cards, then this does indeed revert almost back to the prior. And the reason is, we've got this explaining away effect. The positive test is explained largely by the suspect playing cards. We've got evidence of that. And therefore, there's less reason to believe that the positive test result was caused by the suspect handling explosives. But even then, this is not quite correct. Because this assumes independence between these. Let's just remove the observations. A perfectly reasonable defense argument would say these things are not independent. You could perfectly reasonably argue that if the suspect was handling explosives and was involved in the crime, it's very unlikely that they also would have been playing cards. So if the suspect really was handling explosives, so there's only a 5% chance that they would also have played cards. Let's see what happens now when we get the positive test result. This has gone up. This went up a little bit. But if we now discover that they were playing cards, the probability of suspect handle explosives is now very unlikely. That's gone down. So the combination of the positive test and the evidence that the suspect played cards has significantly decreased the probability that the suspect handled explosives. 
So that evidence is probative in favour of the defence hypothesis.